What's up everybody, how's it going? This is UCSC Recreation. We are coming to you live from the world famous Scripps Institute of Oceanography. Um, we are here today to run you guys through a surf lesson on the beach, teach you how to pop up. Um, and then you're gonna take a ride with us out into the ocean. We're gonna catch some waves together um, for a little virtual surf session. So we're really excited. Um, we are here um, from UCSD Recreation. We want to tell you a little bit more about the surf classes that we have here available for you students. Um, they're called Surfing Fundamentals is the name of the course. It's typically a four week course. Um, sometimes we run eight week courses throughout the quarter where um, you guys sign up through Recreation. Um, it's website, recreation. Uh, UCSD.edu, sorry, um, and you're going to come down. We meet um, virtually or in a classroom setting. We have now moved these onto Zoom for an orientation. You get to meet your surf instructors, get to meet everybody else that you're going to be taking the uh, course with. Um, you'll uh, learn about how to rent your wetsuit from Outback Adventures. They've got really good wetsuit equipment that you'll be um, able to use. Um, and then you take a swim test, um, generally at Canyon View or the Natatorium. And then after that, we of course meet down here on the north side of Scripps Pier. Um, and we have this wonderful ocean, um, great beach to learn to surf. It's nice and safe. Um, and you guys get to um, have at it. So that's a little bit about our surfing course. Um, I'm gonna introduce our surf instructor here in a minute. He's going to run you through a lot of the basics that you can do on the beach here. You can do even right now, wherever you're watching from, if you're watching from your dorm or wherever, any place that has a floor, you'll be able to participate and interact with our instructor as he teaches you. And then any of this stuff that you can do before you get down to the beach and actually get on the surfboard and out in the ocean, it's just going to help you be better prepared. Um, we, we, pop, we practice what we call here the pop-up, how to stand up on the board, um, and we do it over and over again to um, produce what we call me muscle memory. So it just becomes a very natural thing. And trust me, you may feel like it's silly doing it on the floor, but it's going to help you guys a lot when you come out here to surf, okay? So um, that's me, Clayton Claiborne. Um, I run our, sur our surf programs, our learn to swim programs, and scuba diving instructional classes for the recreation department so uh, my office is in the main gym if you're ever around there you come by and say hi and i'm gonna pass it over to my man bryce here he's gonna get you guys going all right good morning tritons once again my name is bryce i'll be your surf instructor for today uh, this will be my third year surf instructing here at UCSD, so I'm really excited to be able to share this day with you. It's absolutely beautiful out there. We're going to go ahead, pretty much work on the land for a little bit, a little bit of a land lesson we like to call it, and then we'll be out in the water very shortly. So first I'm going to go ahead and pretty much just introduce our surfboard and some of the equipment that we'll be using, and we'll be out there. All right, so pretty much we have a couple boards to use today. Here's one of our boards right here. So we have a couple different parts of our board that are really important to know. Firstly, we have the nose, the very front. We have the tail, the very back. These sides right here are called the rails of your surfboard. Pretty much just the top or the deck. You're gonna go ahead and flip your board over. You have the bottom. And right here, we have something that we call fins. So fins are really important as there are steering wheel, our brake, and our accelerator all in one. So they're really important for turning, speeding up, and slowing down. And probably one of the last most important uh, items that we can use out in the water is going to be our leash. So our leash is going to connect us to our surfboard, pretty much making sure we don't have any lost items out at sea. We have a great time out there keeping each other safe out in the lineup. So now that everybody's familiar with the different parts of our surfboard, we're going to go ahead and introduce a little bit of a paddling technique and our pop-up. So we're going to go ahead, pop on this surfboard right here. Once again, our, the tail, the board, the nose, the rails. We're going to go hop on from the tail. It's really important that we have the uh, our toes on the tail of the surfboard 
staying nice right in the middle of the board as well. So <clears throat> once we've kind of established a good position to be on our surfboard, we have kind of a good bit of balance. We're gonna go ahead, once again, make sure we're nice right and in the middle. And now we're gonna start to work on our paddling. So while we paddle, it's really important that we're alternating sides, doing deep, smooth, strong strokes. So a couple things to avoid, try to avoid paddling at the same time with both hands or doing any kind of like large windmilling uh, strokes like that. You're pretty much just gonna focus on this back and forth motion, keeping your chest up and looking forwards in the direction that you wanna go. So it's pretty much simple version of paddling. <clears throat> Once you feel comfortable paddling and you've kind of gotten the feel there, we're gonna go ahead and work on our pop-up now. So the pop-up is pretty much just a transition from laying down on your board to standing. So this is usually a very kind of swift, quick motion. And we try to do it uh, as fluid as possible. So that way we don't fall off our board or have any issues kind of balancing, anything like that. So. You could compare this to a lunge or a jump. I think it's a little bit of both, but I'm going to go ahead and show it to you in fast motion and then break it down into a couple different steps. So this is the speed that you'd be trying to perform your pop up. Once again, first paddling, we're going to go ahead, bring those hands underneath our chest, right on the top of the board. We're going to go ahead, do that lunge or jump motion. So as you can see, it's a pretty fast uh, transition from laying down to, to standing. I'm gonna go ahead, do this maybe one or two more times, uh, just break it down into a couple different steps. So once again, paddling is really important. We're never gonna catch a wave if we don't paddle for it. First step, gonna go ahead, once again, bring those hands underneath our chest. I'm gonna go ahead and bring my front foot forward first. So this is gonna be my left foot. It's just gonna be a little bit of a lunge. And once I'm in this kind of position, I'm gonna go ahead and try to rotate that front foot. And now I'm gonna bring that back foot up. And you can see, once I'm standing, I'm on the back half of the surfboard. I have a slight bend in my knees. I'm looking forwards and my chest and my feet are facing outwards. And if you want, you can even throw those hands out for a little bit of extra balance. So that's pretty much the gist of your pop-up. I'll go ahead and do it one more time. That way everybody's feeling really comfortable, has a good idea of what we're trying to accomplish, and then we'll be hitting the water. So once again, paddling. Once we feel confident we've caught that wave, we're gonna go ahead, bring those hands underneath our chest and pop up. Awesome. Hope you guys have a good idea of how to do your pop-up. I'm gonna cover a couple safety things. We'll be out in the water momentarily. So just uh, take a moment, be patient with us as we kind of get ourselves ready to hit the water. We'll be out there. All right. So a couple of things to be aware of when we're out in the water. It's really important that we hold our board kind of uh, perpendicular to the water at all times. So pretty much either the, the nose or the tail of the board is pointing straight out to the water or straight towards the sand, just like this one is. If your board is kind of parallel to the waves, similar to this board here, it's gonna make it really easy for a wave to kind of tilt and rotate that board and potentially injure you, harm you, or any other surfers that might be in the water. So it's definitely gonna be an inconvenience at the very uh, least. So uh, try your best to keep your board in this position at all times. I'm gonna go ahead, get suited up, and we'll be out in the water. All right, you guys, while Bryce is getting suited up, um, I wanted to mention a few other things, um, such as logistics here. One of the really unique things about our um, surf classes is that you, if you live on campus in the dorms or anywhere um, near campus, you can take the shuttle, it's called the Scripps shuttle, 
Um, runs Monday through Friday, I think every 30 minutes from Upper Campus straight down to the to the pier here. It's like door to door service for you guys if you don't have a vehicle for you to get down to the beach, which is just good for you to know anyway, so that you can come down here and explore this awesome beach that is like your home beach now for uh, next few years. I want you to be able to come down here, take a break, come down here and study, get a nice outdoor, healthy, safe recreational experience. Um, so there's also the MTS Route 30 bus that we'll pick up from the main campus. It runs seven days a week. So you can take that on the weekends down here if you don't have a car and it'll drop you off right here at SIO at the Naga Way entrance. You just walk down the road a little bit, come on down to the beach. Um, so we want you guys to take care of the beach down here, respect it, keep it clean, pick up some trash when you leave, all that stuff. Bryce is gonna talk a little bit more before he goes in the water about some ocean conditions, um, the kind of surf, for, surf forecast stuff just briefly so that when you come down here you know what you're looking at when you look out to shore right what are the waves size what's the wind doing is it low tide high tide he'll talk to you a little bit more about that and then again of course he's going to go over some safety stuff that's really important before you get out in the water um, anytime particularly he's going to talk to you about stingrays those are a good thing to be aware of here at Scripps and also things like covering your head when you fall on your surfboard and all those nice stuff so you guys can do it safely so i'll pass it back off to bryce soon we're gonna get in the water all right yeah thank you clayton for that little bit of an introduction so we'll definitely talk about our four conditions as i like to call them so we pretty much have wind tide current and swell so these four conditions are going to be really important as they kind of dictate uh, what the waves are going to be doing and pretty much telling you whether it's a good day to go surfing or a not so good day to go surfing. So uh, you can really try to do your best um, at learning some of these things as you can um, just really have a better idea on how you want to spend your day off, whether you want to go studying or surfing or maybe sunbathing, whatever works for you. But uh, we'll go ahead and start with wind. So we have a couple different conditions when we refer to wind. We have onshore, offshore, and pretty much no wind. So onshore is pretty much the wind is coming from the ocean and heading on to the shore. Alternatively, we have offshore wind where it's pretty much starting on the shore and heading off into the water. Offshore winds happen to be the uh, the preferred wind condition onshore are not as preferred. So uh, typically that onshore wind makes the waves really crumbly. We do have a little bit of onshore wind today, but it's just starting to pick up. I'd say it's still pretty calm out there. Offshore wind, however, is going to keep the, the lineup or our waves really clean and groomed. Um, pretty much the best conditions you could hope for when you're out in the water. So keeps it really clean and very surfer friendly. Our next condition I'm gonna talk about is tide. So we have low tide and a high tide. Every beach or every surf break uh, tends to work a little bit differently. Here at Scripps, your home break is gonna work around a mid tide. So uh, pretty much in between low and high, typically as it transitions from low to high rather than high to low. But pretty much what you'll find is that low tide uh, the waves are going to break further out. They might be uh, a little bit more steep, a little bit more critical taking off. So you might need a little bit more experience to surf those waves. Rather, if you surf at high tide, the waves are going to be a bit slower, a bit mushier as we call them, and they're going to break closer to shore. And that's kind of what we have going on today. Our next condition is swell. So pretty much you need waves in order to surf. Um, and uh, one of the ways that you can, uh, I guess, gauge how big the surf is, is using feet or meters, or you can e alternatively uh, refer to how big a person is uh, when they're out on the water surfing a wave. So you can reference different body parts, whether it's ankle high, knee high, waist high, shoulder high, and so on. 
Uh, that's pretty much one way to gauge how big the waves are out there. A little bit more of a, a fine-tuned universal way is just referring to either feet or meters, but whatever works best for you. Uh, our next condition we're going to go over is current. So it's really important to be aware of any kind of uh, dangers when we're out in the water. Currents happen to be a big one as uh, they will either move you down the beach or out into deeper water. So um, it's almost like a little mini conveyor belt of water moving uh, in one direction, whether that's up or down the beach or out into deeper water. Um, so just being aware of these can be really important. That way you enter at one place and you make sure you leave at that same location rather than getting washed down uh, half a mile, anything like that. So that's pretty much one thing we're trying to avoid today. Usually when the waves are really small, we don't have to worry about too much of a current. But if you have any kind of doubts or uh, confusion about currents, definitely uh, ask a local lifeguard as they'll be more than happy to identify any kind of areas of danger when you're out on the water. So I'm pretty sure I've covered our four conditions. We're going to talk about maybe one or two safety things. Uh, as we're going to be surfing in pretty shallow water today, uh, it's really important that uh, when you jump off your board or wipe out, fall, uh, you first cover your head and uh, if you are in a position where you could jump off your board, you want to avoid diving into the water head first as we're once again going to be in pretty shallow water today. So uh, feet first is definitely the right move there. We do have one last safety feature to be aware of when we're out in the water and that is our stingrays. So since we're out in the ocean, we do have to share the water with all the uh, natural inhabitants. Uh, one of those being our stingray. So the stingray is a type of fish, just a, a creature that's hanging out in the water. It's pretty much just going to be cruising along the sand. It blends in really well, so sometimes it can be hard to see or identify when they're out there. But pretty much the best practice to avoid a stingray is something that we like to call the stingray shuffle. You're pretty much just going to shuffle your feet side to side and avoid making really big steps or stomps when you're out in the water. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate that and we'll be out there momentarily. So when we do our stingray shuffle, we're pretty much just gonna move our feet side to side just like this and we're gonna avoid making any big stomps out in the water. Pretty much a stingray's natural reaction to getting stepped on is gonna protect itself and its method of protecting itself is uh, pretty much lashing out with its tail, which has a sharp little barb on the end. Uh, and typically it's gonna hit your foot, your ankle. So we really wanna avoid that at all costs today. So practice your stingray shuffle. Alrighty guys, I think it's about time to hit the water. I know I'm ready to get out there. I'm sure you are as well. So I'm gonna grab my board, grab my leash and get ready. Clayton's gonna be following me out there this morning. So just uh, bear with us for one minute. So before we hit the water, it's really important that we use our leash. So our leash is pretty much connected to the back of our board near the tail. What we're gonna do is connect this to our back foot or our back ankle. So if you remember when I was standing, I had my left foot in the front, my right foot in the back. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my leash, gonna undo that Velcro there, and put it on my back foot, just like so. 
It can be snug. It doesn't have to be too tight. We don't want to cut off any kind of circulation or anything like that. But this is pretty much just going to keep my board uh, attached or connected to me at all times when I'm out in the water. So now that uh, I'm nice and secure and connected to my board, I'm about ready to hit the water. <clears throat> Should be ready to go. Got some waves. All right. All right, guys, we're going to follow Bryce out. He's going to de demonstrate a good way to enter what we call the inside of the break. These are the small waves breaking whitewash water um, waves breaking close to shore. This is where you start and where you learn to surf. And then once you get more comfortable, more skilled, uh, you transition through the, what we call the impact zone to catching open face waves on the outside of the zone. That's where people are sitting out out there. In our course, it's unique because we try to, of course, uh, start with the basics on the inside. Then you have time to transition to the outside. Uh, so let's go for it. We'll catch a couple waves on the inside with Bryce um, and then we'll follow him out. We'll go to the outside can do even more fun stuff out there. Maybe catch some open face waves. You guys can come along for the ride. If you have any questions, you can type them in. I'll try to respond. I'm not sure if I can do it out in the water, but let's, let's go for it. Woo. All right. Okay. You guys see me? All right. So we're cruising out. Go check out where we are. This is at Scripps on the north side. So down there you got Flax Beach, world famous Flax Beach. Really great waves down there. Definitely not where you, where you want to go to learn. You want to learn here where the waves are smaller. And then once, you know, maybe you take our, one of our surfing courses, you get more experienced knowledgeable then maybe you can try to go surf for blacks but we definitely recommend you stay you come to learn how to surf here at Scripps first if you do go on the blacks it's a beautiful beach uh, one thing for safety is make sure you stay far away from the cliffs down at blacks there are occasional cliff slides and it can be dangerous so when you go down there with your friends you're hanging out don't sit right underneath the canyon walls you want to be out closer to the shoreline or you want to be out where the road goes down to the um, to the beach because there's no overhanging cliffs there or down towards where the lifeguards set up where there's a little perch um, so it's a good safety note here's SIO right here um, really awesome come down here and visit and check it out there's a restaurant down here called Caroline's La Jolla Shores is further down there where there's easier access and parking however gets extremely crowded that's why we love our beach over here on the north end, it's a little tucked away, but it's a lot better to learn to surf here without as many other surfers out there to potentially run into each other. So check out our little area. It's pretty much empty over here and, and we like it. It's great for our students. All right, let's get out there. Whew. All right. Whew. There goes Bryce right there. So I don't know if you guys can hear me, but I'll try to keep out. Don't want it sideways. Eventually we're going to go to the outside. Talk about sitting on our board and picking out open face waves. But here we go. This is a little inside open face. Couple strokes pop up. Look at that. Woo! Right on. And then he just kind of steps off casually with control. Kind of like if you're walking down the stairs, that last step. Kind of step off nice 
and neat. They don't roll an ankle. Not fall. There's no rocks over here on the north side of the pier. It's all sand bottom, which is great for learning. You don't have to worry about falling on a reef, sharp reef or anything like that. There is some rocks further north up the beach, so we don't go too far north. We also like to surf a good distance from the pier, right? Um, obviously, that's a bit of a in water hazard if you were to get too close to it and we don't want to rush up against the pilings, right? So, Celtic stay in the center here. Woo! Island. Very nice. Nice and controlled. So, you can see. See if you guys can you guys see the bottom? I'm gonna go under here soon. Woo! Oh, here we go. In the spot. Eee! Can't high five. Got a social distance, but super fun. Let's see. It's a pretty good day here. I don't know if it's showing up visibility wise. You can see my feet. Sometimes you'll see seals out here. Dolphins. Out the back, seals sometimes will swim in close here. Occasionally, if you go down south towards the marine room, down in La Jolla Cove, there's a colony of leopard sharks. I know I say the word shark, you might get afraid, but don't worry. Leopard sharks are not dangerous. They're not tiger sharks. Leopard sharks are bottom feeders. There we go. They don't, uh, they won't bite. When they cruise around, they have really actually real pretty you know leopard like spots on them i encourage you guys if you can go down there and you can go snorkeling um go on a kayak a paddle board you can kind of go swim out there with them obviously stay, stay a safe distance so you don't disturb them in their natural habitat habitat here we go oh Woo. very nice what a great day out here not at all crowded, nice mellow waves. Um, I would say the fall is the best time to surf here, summer and fall. Some of the waves can almost be too small. In the fall, we start getting, um, in the summer we have mostly swell coming from the Southern Hemisphere. In the fall, we start getting stronger, more powerful swells that come from the North, up in the Bay of Alaska. Um, and then the energy gets a lot stronger and the waves get a lot better down here. Sometimes it can be too big though, um, but that's why the water kind of cools off and the waves start getting bigger. So this is a good spot where you don't really want waves overhead high as the beach can tend to close out, you know? Um, so like Bryce was saying, we want it kind of medium tide. <laughs> Very cool. All right. You know what we'll do is maybe I'm gonna go grab, I'm gonna go grab a, my, my board, Bryce, and I'll pal out with you. You wanna take this? You wanna catch some little waves on the inside here? All right. I'll give it a go. 
and you can turn it to face you if you want or give them, take them along for the ride, put that strap right. on so you don't lose it. All right, we're going to try to go catch a wave. Got my board. We're ready to go. Hope you guys are enjoying this. <laughs> I'm going to try my best to do a one-handed paddle into some of these waves. So pretty much just sitting up on my board right now, enjoying the view, just kind of waiting for our wave. As you can see, the water's pretty clear. Should be able to see the bottom. So you see we have a little wave coming in right here. I'm going to try my best to paddle over there. I think this other surfer might get it. Here he goes. Paddling, taking off, and standing. Awesome. All right. So I think I see our wave coming in. We're gonna give this one a go. There we have Clayton out there. We're gonna go ahead, paddle back out. <clears throat> so if anybody knows Bethany Hamilton, she's a pretty famous female surfer from Hawaii. Ended up having a little bad shark accident. Only has one arm, but paddles incredibly. Here goes Clayton, style guru. <clears throat> Yeah, I agree, Tessa. I was uh, a little scared about putting the, the phone in the water, but the case is holding up great. Hope you guys are enjoying the view. We got a little set coming in. So a set is pretty much a group of waves that tend to be a little bit bigger. <laughs> so I got my board going up and over. I'm gonna hop on my board here. Here's Clayton paddling back out. <clears throat> yeah, definitely very beginner friendly today. Got a... There goes Clayton. Looking extra comfortable out here this morning. He's gonna go ahead, paddle back out. I'm gonna see if I can find myself a wave now. Feeling a little, little jealous, a little jelly this morning. But yeah, as Clayton was saying, 
surfing is definitely one of those sports where social distancing is definitely possible. We can make sure we're making enough space out in the lineup for each other. And yeah, I would say today is one of those great days for beginners and anyone who's just really wanting to have some fun out on the water. <coughs> Yeah, sure. So the next thing we're gonna go over is something that we like to call an egg beater kick. So this is pretty much a way where we can turn our board around while sitting. So I'm sitting on my board right now. Uh, the angle might be a little better if Clayton does it actually, but pretty much he's sitting on his board, leaning back a little bit, either nice and in the center of the board or uh, leaning back just slightly. But pretty much what he's going to do is rotate his feet going in the same direction. And you're going to see he's going to find it really easily to turn himself around. Kind of like treading water. Yep. Pool. You can do that with your knees here. And you can rotate. We're going to try to catch this wave. The one-handed takeoff. There we go. And here goes Clayton on wave number two. Very nice. Woo! Oh, even trying to fit a little turn on the end section there. We're gonna go ahead, paddle back out. So as you can see, you kind of get in a rhythm of catching your wave on in and paddling back out. So as a beginner, you might do a little bit more walking than paddling, but the goal is to get off those feet and really use those arms when we get uh, back to our starting point in the lineup. Yeah, we might have one coming right now. Does anybody have any questions we can answer? If you feel free to type them in the chat. We'll be happy to answer them. <clears throat> Here goes Clayton taking off. Standing. Down the line. There he goes. So, yeah, you can see the pier here. Just beyond the pier on the other side, we have downtown La Jolla. Right over there at the uh, mini peninsula at the very end, we like to call that Alligator Point. We don't have any alligators here in San Diego, but uh, that little peninsula does kind of resemble the shape of an alligator tail. Just got to come up with a creative name. But yeah, hope you guys are enjoying. I certainly am. I wish... Wish we could have one or two of you out in the water with us today. I think I see a wave coming. Ah. 
Didn't quite make that one, but no worries. There he goes. Awesome. Yeah, definitely trying to avoid purling can be really helpful. Want to make sure we uh, capitalize on as many waves as possible. So doing what you can to uh, ensure you catch the wave and don't fall is going to be really helpful. All right, I'm gonna give this wave a go. Here we are. There goes Clayton turning around, dropping in, taking off, going left, looking extra comfortable. Forty-five. All right. Yeah, if anybody has any questions, feel free to type them into the chat. You on this board with the leash? We're gonna go out and just catch a couple with. Bryce, check out his style. Style is important, even when you're beginning. <laughs> so, we like to help you be safe and stylish. Here we go, arch back. Now he's in there. See how his back, little, his back leg, his knees kind of bent and knocked knock knee in towards his other knee. That really helps him have a balanced, good compact style. And everything's facing the direction that he's going, more or less. The head's turned, your chest can be facing out, like towards the pier in this case. But his left foot is forward, he's a regular foot, footer. If your right foot's forward, which is totally fine either way, 
your goofy footer. So it's important to establish your stance. If you're not exactly sure, uh oh, big wave coming. Ah! I'm gonna get caught inside. Can I make it? Yeah. There's another one. Usually the waves will come in sets. Two, three, four, maybe six wave sets, kind of depends. But you want to be aware, generally the set waves break larger, they're larger and they break further out on the sandbar. So you want to be prepared and anticipate those. So you always be looking out towards the horizon. Don't turn your back to the ocean, it'll sneak up on you. And um, that's why when we do get to the outside, instead of laying down like this all the time, we eventually get to where we're sitting up. Now I've got a higher perspective. I can see further out, engage when waves are going to come. Then I can actually get into position where I need to be the most effectively. Catch that wave. Set up a line going left, going right, and make the drop, right? That's kind of what it's all about. Here we go. Woo! Oh, kind of faded right, went left. Very cool. All right, just another day in paradise at UCSD. Oh, I see Jade Rady says, can we rent boards from UCSD? So yes, actually Outback Adventures does surfboard rentals. Um, for, the, for our perspective, the UCSD surf classes, these surfboards we don't rent out. These are just reserved for participants in the course. But if you already know how to surf, or let's say you take the class, you wanna rent a board um, after the class, or like, like I said, you already know how to surf, um, and so you just need access to a board. Yes, go to Outback Adventures, they're on the north side of campus. Check them out on our website, because I think now they're doing all uh, their rentals um, contactless, make a reservation online. So it'd be for a wetsuit, surfboard, then you can go pick it up at a specific time and then come down here and surf. I think they do them for the day, for the weekend, and then you return your gear. And there are, is reduced pricing for UCSD students, grad students, um, staff and faculty. So check out our website for that type of stuff. They also do all sorts of outback gear, you know, backpacks, sleeping bags, snowboards, skis, like stuff if you're gonna go to the mountains in the winter. Super cool having like, a, a gear shop like that. So that stuff can be attainable to you guys. You don't necessarily have to go out and purchase it. If you are gonna get a surfboard though, you really wanna get into it. Again, I suggest taking the class, getting comfortable on these types of boards. We, um, these are really good for learning. Um, the wave storms that you see at, at Costco, those actually are pretty good boards, really good value and inexpensive, but they're not gonna last as long. So I recommend learning on some of our boards that are a little bit more durable. Um, and then if you really want to invest in one, you know, we can help you in trying to find a good used one, um, depending on you know, how much you want to spend and stuff. So a lot of different ways to find used boards that people uh, you know, maybe they're moving away and they want to get rid of their board and it's still in good equip, uh, still in good shape, so you can score. But brand new boards, real boards, are going to be several hundred dollars, four hundred, six hundred dollars if you really want a brand, a brand new, nice, shiny longboard. So that's why it's good to have that university can provide this type of class and this type of, um, you know, recreational thing for a really. Um, no fee to very cheap fee for you students because otherwise we know it, it can be get expensive just to get into doing the activity. So we want to try to provide that for you guys while you're here on campus um, and really take advantage of your new home um, here in San Diego. Absolutely beautiful. We have the ocean right at our doorstep, which is incredibly unique for UCSD. We are one of the always the if not if not the number one surf school on uh, any college in the country, we're up there, one, two, or three. And it's because you can call out and do this right out from where you live on campus. You can walk down, take the shuttle down um, in between lessons on weekends. It's 
it's not gonna be, it doesn't get more attainable than, than that right there, right? So we want you to enjoy it and, and do it safely, you know? Um, a lot of our course is teaching you guys about our beach. So when you come down here, not just during the class, but after the class, you come down here with your friends, you're knowledgeable, you know kind of the ins and outs of this beach, um, this area, you know, where rip, rip currents tend to form in certain areas. One tend to, form, for example, tends to form right here on the north side of the beach, north side of the pier or south side. A lot of times we get a side shore current going south. It hits the pier and then it starts going out as a rip current. And so if you're aware of these currents out here, they're not anything to be afraid of necessarily. It's just want you to be aware of them. And then when you come out here, you're like, oh, I feel comfortable. I feel like I know what's going on. Same type of thing for Black Speed. It has some more safety um, things to be aware of. Stronger rip currents, larger, more powerful waves. So we definitely encourage you guys to you know, learn with some of our instructors that have experience there. Um, we even do an intermediate surf class at Black's certain times a year in the summer and the fall when the waves tend to be smaller. We don't offer it in the winter um, or spring because the waves are really big then and it's not really not optimal, ideal at all for learning. Um, but we run classes here that year round, um, which is really special too because again, a lot of um, surf classes, surf camps, even here in San Diego or around the country really only operate in the summer. And we are fortunate enough to be able to operate year round. So we have awesome classes like in the fall, September, October, when, when I say the waves are really good and nice to learn and conditions are awesome. And the summer crowds have kind of left. You can get out here. And we even run some in the winter. We run fewer classes because the water does get colder, but there's still really fun days out here to take advantage of that. And then in the spring also. Woo. So if you can't get into class in a given quarter, um, they do tend to fill up. So you want to sign up quickly on our website when recreation opens, when the registration opens. And we announce that on our website, on the homepage, they'll announce um, usually about a month out. We usually open registration about a month from when our classes begin. And then um, if a few weeks before we open reg, um, we will post when the registration dates are gonna be so that you can stay on top of it. And, and try to register when the registration starts. If you don't get a spot, don't worry. Um, generally, if you keep trying the next quarter, quarter after, you can usually get in and get a spot, right? Um, so it is one of the, I'm biased maybe, because I've been running the program for over 10 years, but we're really proud of it. We're really excited to get you guys out here. Um, I think we're gonna check off right here soon. Maybe I'll catch a wave in with Bryce, but our time is running out with you guys. We appreciate you joining us for HSD Recreations Virtual Surf Lesson Session. Um, and we hope to see you out here in the water one of these days. So when we get a, a, a dolphin swim by or a seal, sometimes they come in into the surf. Sun's coming out a little bit through the clouds. So we're having a good time. Maybe I'll catch this one in. Bryce, you want to sign off for us from the ocean? Absolutely. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you guys enjoyed. And we'll see you next time. Fellow Tritons. Yoo!